All right, there is a jail in the East County that doesn't look like a jail at all. Rather, it is built like an open college campus. The warden says it helps prepare inmates to reenter the outside world. And Team 10 investigative reporter Jennifer Kastner toured Las Colinas Women's Jail. Supporters say it's a step in the right direction. Kimberly, exactly. But the big question is, does this jail actually work? Well, we are examining its design for our new initiative, the Transparency Project. The project was born out of the passing of a new state law that's pulling back the curtain on how local officers operate and investigate themselves. Where's she at? The chola with the bangs. Thought she was cool. Kicked it with gangs. Monica Estrada is finally finding her voice. I've done time throughout San Diego, Riverside County, banning up in the prison, Chachilla, CIW, and this is the first time I've ever learned and got some tools that I know I'm definitely going to use to build my foundation when I leave here. She's serving time for drug sales at the Las Colinas Women's Jail in Santee, although it's hard to tell she's incarcerated. It eases their transition um, into the outside world because we treat it like it's an outside world. The secured community is run by Captain James Madsen. It's such a unique feeling being on this. I've been in several jails and prisons for work, but never one where I feel like I'm on a college campus. Right. It was designed that way to give these ladies a feeling of community. The innovative design is an example of what the sheriff's department believes it's doing right in a time of increased hostility toward law enforcement. The last thing a deputy wants is to have a negative interaction with an inmate. But it hasn't always gone smoothly for the San Diego County jails run by the sheriff's department. This April, a woman named Destiny Guns escaped from Las Colinas after climbing several fences and walls. A week later, she was recaptured. There's also security video from 2017 showing deputies punching an inmate at the central jail. He was wheeled off in a stretcher. And last year, Paul Silva, a schizophrenic, was rushed to the hospital from central jail. His family's attorney says he was stun gunned four times and went into cardiac arrest. He later died. On a daily basis, what are you doing to make sure that your officers aren't discriminating, aren't inflicting cruel and unusual punishment? We monitor, we talk to our deputies, we move around, and really the deputies buy into the philosophy of reentry and rehabilitation. They understand that these folks are going to be in the community. Madsen says the sheriff's department is building up its inmate safety program. We've hired more staff, more medical staff, uh, more psychologists, psychiatrists. The department has been criticized in recent years for a high inmate suicide rate. Two years ago, a grand jury report revealed that 46 people have committed suicide in San Diego County jails in the past 12 years. The suicide rate is the highest in all of California's large county jail systems. And just this Wednesday, two county supervisors are reporting that a comprehensive review of our jail's inmate care programs is being conducted. It comes after a recent Union Tribune investigation revealed a high number of in-custody deaths, including suicides. Having it open like this, it helps us supervise the inmates. This month, the Sheriff's Department reported it's been making changes based on recommendations from an independent suicide prevention expert, including enhanced monitoring, new mandatory suicide prevention training, and the creation of response teams to track self-harm reports, attempted suicides, and suicides. They're doing yoga outside, they're working with each other, they're playing organized sports. Patricia Ceballos helps run the wellness and vocational programs. She says says Las Colinas was designed to create a more normal environment like the one outside jail so the women can focus on rehabilitation and re-entry. Being able to empower, support, educate and provide tools to people to be successful and to thrive in our community are important to us here in the Sheriff's Department. Even the living quarters are unique. There are no cells. Everyone can see everyone and talk to everyone. Yeah, yeah community. It does not feel like jail. To me, it feels like more of like of a maybe a high security rehab. Melanie Jones was selling meth before she came here. Now she's studying culinary arts. I'm a new person today. Las Colinas was completed three years ago with almost $140 million from the county general funds. But is it working? 10 News asked the Sheriff's Department how many inmates have returned after being released. 
It reports that it looks at three year snapshots for all the jails combined. For 2014 to 2016, it was more than 36 and a half percent. Then it went up. For 2015 to 2017, it was more than 37 percent. The 2016 to 18 data is being evaluated. So while the effectiveness as a whole may not yet be certain, it is still clear there are positive changes on personal levels. My voice is powerful and when I speak, people listen. So when she goes home, Estrada plans to write a book. Some chicken soup for the inmate soul when life happens tribal. <laughs> And the sheriff's department has a similar men's jail in Otay Mesa with that open campus design, but it's older and much smaller. There are currently no plans to redesign the other local jails. We have more information on the Las Colinas jail and a detailed explanation of the transparency project that we're doing with the nonprofit Solutions Journalism. Go to 10news.com, find this story and our Team 10 investigates. Jennifer Kastner, 10 News.